The contents of this video are intended to teach you basic principles of safety in the care for your central venous catheter. Your healthcare provider will determine the specific treatment and approach to care that is best for you. Hi, I'm Dr. Mark Rupp. I'm the medical director of the Department of Infection Control here at the University of Nebraska Medical Center. Your doctors and your healthcare providers have determined that you require a central venous catheter after your discharge from the hospital in order to continue to receive necessary medications. Now, central venous catheters are an essential breakthrough in the practice of medicine, and they have greatly eased our ability to deliver medications and to obtain blood samples from patients. Unfortunately, however, they can sometimes be associated with complications such as infection or blood clots. The information in this video is provided to you so that you're better informed about the care of your central venous catheter and you can take an active role in preventing those complications and help your healthcare providers do a better job to keep you safe. Central venous catheters are used when short or long-term intravascular or IV access is needed in your care. The amount of time the catheter remains in place varies depending on the needs of each patient. Some people will need their central line for a few days, while others may need it for several weeks, months, or even longer. The catheter is a long, soft, thin, hollow tube placed into one of the large veins that lead to your heart. Those large veins are part of your central blood circulation system, so we call these catheters central line catheters or central lines. Your central line might exit your body in your arm, upper chest, or your neck. There are different types of central line catheters. The type of catheter that you have, the location where it was placed in your body, and where it exits your body were determined by your healthcare provider based on your healthcare needs. You might have a catheter that is surgically inserted under your skin and then tunneled into the large vein leading to your heart. A small cuff helps hold the catheter in place. These are often called tunneled lines. Or you might have a pick line, which is a peripherally inserted central catheter placed in the upper arm and threaded into the large vein leading into your heart. Some patients have what's called a port. This is a small device that is surgically implanted under the skin on the arm or chest with a catheter that is threaded into the large vein leading to your heart. It does not have an exit site like the other types of central lines. To use a port, it must be accessed using a special needle. We will talk more about this later in the video. Even though there are different types of central lines, they have a lot in common. First, the catheter will have one or more openings called lumens. This is where medications, fluids, or nutrients will be given to you so they can enter your bloodstream. Some catheters have one, two, or three lumens. A single lumen catheter only has one opening at the end of the catheter that all fluids or medications will be given through. Catheters with two openings, called double lumen catheters, and three openings, called triple lumen catheters, are used when a patient needs to receive multiple medications, fluids, or nutrients that are not allowed to mix with one another. Separate openings allow different medications or fluids to be given at the same time. There are several benefits to using central lines. First, since it's inserted into a large blood vessel near your heart, it allows you to receive the treatments that you need over a longer period of time than what could be given in a smaller IV in your arm or hand. Second, having the central line allows you to be more active as you receive treatment because you can receive care in your home or in an outpatient clinic. A third benefit to having the central line is that blood samples can be taken directly from the catheter. This keeps you from having to be poked by needles every time a blood test is needed. There are some risks for complications with the central line that could result in hospitalization or, in some cases, even death. When a foreign object, such as a central line catheter, is put into the body, there are risks for complications. It is important that everyone involved in your care understands how to avoid or detect these complications. What are the complications you need to watch for and avoid? Complications with central lines include infection, blood clot forming in the vein where the central line is placed, blockage, also called an occlusion, when fluids cannot be pushed in or blood cannot be drawn out of the line, displacement or dislodgement, 
The catheter may become dislodged or displaced if it gets pulled on. Damage. Sometimes the catheter will crack or show other signs of damage. Later, we will review the signs you need to watch for and when to contact your healthcare provider if you suspect a problem with your central line. But first, let's review important care routines that will help prevent some of these complications. Your healthcare provider will discuss with you whether or not you or other caregivers will need to provide central line care while you have the central line in place at home. The care given by healthcare providers might be a little different from how you are taught to do central line care. Healthcare providers must follow specific principles of care for central lines to avoid complications. These principles should be followed every time by care providers in any setting while caring for your central line. Hand hygiene. First, before any person uses your central line, be sure they have washed their hands. This can be done with conventional soap and water using vigorous rubbing for at least 15 seconds or by using an alcohol-based hand gel and vigorously rubbing the hands together until all the surfaces of the hands are covered with the gel and the liquid has dried. It is important that this hand hygiene occur before and after anyone provides care to your central line. Accessing the central line. If your central line exits your body and has one, two, or three lumens, there will be a cap attached to each lumen. Each lumen must be capped at all times so that the catheter is not left open and does not touch surrounding surfaces such as your clothing or your skin. This helps prevent complications such as a blood infection. There are many types of caps used by healthcare agencies. It's okay if the various healthcare providers who take care of your central line don't use the same type of cap. The important thing is that all lumens are protected by a cap. Medications or fluids are given to you through this cap. Whenever your central line is used, it will be accessed through this cap. Before any medications, fluids, or nutrients can be administered through the line, the cap must be cleaned. The cap needs to be scrubbed vigorously with friction for at least five seconds using a newly opened alcohol pad. This helps prevent a complication such as a blood infection. Cap changes. Each type of cap comes with a manufacturer's recommendation as to how often the cap needs to be changed. Your healthcare provider will make sure the caps are changed regularly based on the manufacturer's recommendation, usually every three to four days. There are times when caps need to be replaced before the next scheduled change. For instance, after being punctured by syringes over and over again, the cap will begin to wear out and may become cracked or soiled with blood. These are signs that the cap needs to be changed. If you ever notice blood in your catheter cap, cracks, or damage on the surface of the cap, be sure to inform your healthcare provider so that the damaged or soiled caps are changed as soon as possible to prevent an infection. Keeping your central line open and operating. Before fluids or medications are given to you through your central line, it first must be flushed to make sure it's open and not occluded or blocked. Remember, that's one of the complications that can happen with central lines. Flushing the line before and after each use and on a routine schedule, even if the line is not being used on a regular basis, is one way providers can prevent your central line from becoming occluded. Flushing solution and frequency. After the cap is scrubbed with alcohol vigorously for at least five seconds, or if you have an implanted port, after the special needle is inserted into the hub of your port, the care provider will attach a syringe to the central line and flush it with saline, fluid that is very similar to the fluid in your body's cells. After the care provider determines your line is open and free from a blockage or occlusion, he or she can safely administer your medications or fluids. Your central line also needs to be flushed after you have received fluids or medications to make sure the entire amount of the medication is through the line and in your bloodstream. If medications are left in the central line without being flushed through, the line may become occluded. When the catheter is flushed, it is important that an adequate amount of saline is used to make sure the line is cleared. Adult central lines are longer and require more saline to flush through the line than the central lines placed in children. 
For adults, 10 milliliters of saline should be used to flush a central line. For children, three to five milliliters of saline is needed. If the central line has more than one lumen, each lumen needs to be flushed with the required amount of saline to help prevent blockage. Syringe size. Regardless of what type of central line you have, flushing the line before and after giving medications or fluids should only be done with the use of a 10 milliliter size syringe or larger to prevent catheter damage. After the line is flushed with a 10 milliliter syringe, a smaller syringe can be used to administer medications. This will not damage the catheter. The size of the syringe is only critical during the flushing. Schedule of routine flushing for your central line. How often your central line needs to be flushed is based on the type of catheter you have, your particular care needs, and how frequently the line is going to be used. There are specific flushing requirements for each type of central venous catheter. If you have a port, the port should be flushed before and after each use or at a minimum of every four weeks. If you have a tunneled line such as a Hickman, Broviac, or Groschon catheter or a PIC line, the central line should be flushed before and after each use or at a minimum of once every 24 hours. Special pick lines called power picks should be flushed before and after each use or at a minimum of once a week. Remember, if your central line has more than one lumen, each lumen needs to be flushed on a routine basis whether or not each lumen is being used. In some cases, the patient and or their family members or other caregivers are taught how to flush the central line. Your care provider will discuss with you whether or not you or your family members or other caregivers will need to learn how to flush your central line. Central line dressing change. Your central line has a dressing cover it to prevent the catheter from being exposed to germs that can cause a blood infection. Your central line might be covered with a gauze dressing or a transparent dressing. The dressing should be kept on at all times and should be kept clean and dry. Notify your healthcare provider if your dressing becomes loose or falls off, or if it becomes wet with water or soiled with blood or other fluids. These situations need to be assessed by a healthcare provider and oftentimes will require that the dressing be changed. The dressing also needs to be changed on a regular basis, whether or not it is loose or dirty. Transparent dressings need to be changed every seven days. If you have a port, the care provider might use gauze to help support the special needle that is in place, and the site might be covered with a transparent dressing. This dressing should be changed every seven days. The dressing change is a multi-step process that needs to be done using sterile technique. The provider will begin with hand hygiene. Hand hygiene can be achieved with soap and water or alcohol-based hand gel. Your care provider might use a central line dressing kit that contains all the supplies needed for the procedure, or your care provider may open individual supplies that are not contained within one package. Some agencies may use a special type of dressing that has chlorhexidine embedded in the dressing material or in a small round sponge-like disc that will be applied directly over the catheter exit site. Use of these types of dressings are determined by agency policy. Some providers will use them, others may not. The important thing is that proper procedures are followed during the dressing change and any time the central line is accessed to help keep you from having complications such as infections. The care provider will wear a mask during the dressing change. You will also be asked to wear a mask or turn your head away from the central line exit site and keep it turned away during the entire procedure. This protects the catheter exit site from any germs that could be spread if you or your care provider would sneeze or cough. The care provider will put on clean gloves to remove the old dressing. Once removed, the old dressing will be discarded. After the old dressing has been removed and discarded, the care provider will take off their gloves and discard them, and they will clean their hands again. After proper hand hygiene, the care provider will put on sterile gloves. The exit side of the catheter must be cleaned every time the dressing is changed. There are several solutions that can be used for cleaning the catheter exit site. One solution that might be used is chlorhexidine. 
This is the preferred solution for cleaning the central line exit sites unless the patient has an allergy or sensitivity to chlorhexidine or the patient is less than two months of age. Another solution that might be used is a mixture of iodine and alcohol. If you have an allergy or sensitivity to chlorhexidine and iodine is used, it will be allowed to air dry completely and then will be wiped off with saline or sterile water. This may take a minute or more. The care provider will scrub the catheter exit site with the disinfecting solution using gentle friction for at least 30 seconds to ensure that the disinfectant is most effective. The solution should be allowed to air dry completely and should not be fanned or blown on. After the site is cleaned, the new dressing will be applied and secured in place. After the new dressing is in place, you and the care provider will be able to remove the mask and the care provider will remove their sterile gloves and discard them and will, again, wash their hands. The care provider will write down the date and time that the new dressing was placed so other care providers know when the next scheduled dressing change should happen. Remember, notify your health care provider if your dressing becomes loose or falls off or if it becomes wet with water or soiled with blood or other fluids. If any of these happen, most likely the dressing will need to be changed. Cap changes. As explained earlier, the access cap connected to the end of each catheter lumen is usually changed every three to four days and at the same time the dressing is changed. Remember, if you notice blood in the catheter cap or cracks in or damage to the surface of the cap, be sure to inform your healthcare provider so that the damaged or soiled caps are changed as soon as possible to help prevent complications. Troubleshooting problems with using the central line. Occasionally, your central line might get blocked or occluded. Signs may include one or all of the following. The care provider is not able to draw blood from one or more of the lumens. The care provider is not able to flush the line or they notice a slow or sluggish flow of the medications or fluids being given through your line. Another sign that your central line might be occluded is resistance is met or fluid leaks when the line is being flushed. If one or more of these problems occur, the care provider may take steps to help resolve the issue or to confirm that the line is occluded and take steps to open it. The care provider will first look to see if a lumen is bent or if a clamp on the catheter was not open before they attempted to flush or use the line. If this isn't the problem, then the care provider may ask you to change the position of your body by lifting your arm above your head or turning your body from side to side. The care provider may also ask you to cough forcibly. Movements like these can change the position of the catheter enough to allow the line to open completely. If these position changes do not resolve the problem, the next step is to remove the access cap and flush each lumen or draw blood by attaching the syringe directly to the end of the catheter lumen. If you have a port, the care provider may change the access needle. If these techniques do not solve the problem and the line remains difficult to flush or to draw blood from, the care provider might change the dressing. Sometimes the movement of scrubbing the site helps shift the position of the catheter and resolve the issue. If none of these steps open the line, the care provider will consult with your physician to consider what next step should be taken to clear the occluded line. This may involve you receiving an x-ray to confirm that the tip of your catheter is located where it should be in the large vessel leading to your heart, or you may receive special medication directly into the catheter to help dissolve a clot in your line. This type of medication may be given twice if the first dose does not open the line. Sometimes a central line can become blocked to the point that it needs to be replaced. Your care providers will do all they can to help prevent this. The patient's role in monitoring the central line at home. You and your caregivers play a key role in recognizing potential complications with your central line. Every healthcare professional who uses your central line will take steps to keep you safe from complications. Let your healthcare team know if you experience problems or complications with your central line. It is important for you to look at the catheter and catheter site every day. Check the catheter exit site or the needle insertion site if you have an implanted port. Pay attention to how you are feeling every day. Sometimes complications don't have any visible signs on the outside of your body. Contact your health care provider immediately if you experience any of these symptoms. 
infection. Some drainage is normal at first. Watch for and report any new changes in drainage. Is there an increased amount? Is there a change to the color of the drainage? Is the skin around the catheter site red or warm? Do you have a fever of 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit or higher? Do you have chills? Do you have pain or burning in your body in the area where the catheter is inserted? A blood clot will affect the circulation around the catheter and cause swelling. Do you have any swelling on the side of the body where the catheter is located? Do you have any swelling in your neck or upper arm on the side of your body where the catheter is located? Sometimes the swelling may not be visible, but instead you might feel a tight aching in your arm where the catheter is located. Do you have muscle stiffness or trouble moving? Are you experiencing any coughing, wheezing, or shortness of breath? Are you experiencing a rapid or irregular heartbeat? When fluids cannot be pushed in or if blood cannot be drawn out of the catheter, it could mean the line is blocked. If you've been taught how to care for the line and you notice that you cannot flush it or draw blood from it, contact your healthcare provider immediately. If the central line falls out, if you notice that more of the catheter is outside of your body than what was there the day before, the line may have been partially pulled out. Never push the catheter back in. If you have a port and you can see that the needle has fallen out or is starting to fall out, notify your healthcare provider if you notice pain or an odd sensation in your jaw or under your tongue when the line is flushed. These could be signs that the catheter is not in the correct position. Is there leakage coming from your central line? Are there any breaks or cracks or tears in the line? Are there gurgling noises coming from the catheter? This video has provided you with a lot of information about your central venous catheter and the care that you might receive. It's important for you to be well informed and to take an active role in your care. Don't be afraid to ask questions. If you see a care provider doing something that confuses you, ask them to explain to you what they're doing and why. Voice any concerns you have about your central line care. After all, it is your central venous catheter, and your health care providers are counting on you to help them do the very best job they can to keep you safe. The goal of this video was to provide you with information about your central venous catheter and the steps that can be taken to prevent complications like infection and blood clots. Feel free to watch this video for as long as it's needed or as many times as is necessary so that you feel comfortable with the care of your central venous catheter and in taking an active role in preventing complications. The Nebraska Medical Center acknowledges and thanks the patients, families, and staff who assisted with the production of this video and the Cardinal Health Foundation for their financial support of this project.